Then we had two more questions on, on innovation, which uh, shows that uh, there is uh, at least a lot of interest in the issue. And, and Machi, although being cautious about uh, um, putting too much stress on innovation, is using a very innovative device himself uh, as he speaks. <laughs> but Diogo, um, long-term vision of innovation, that was one question, and then the new fields. Uh, we want, so, to, I, we I, want to know what yes, to invest I think, in. Uh, I think that um, in times of crisis, should be times of uh, social creativity because in a time of crisis everything is open, right? And some of the most successful companies were created during crisis because crises are periods where the things are called to a reset. So people think in a different way and we should welcome that and we should, we should welcome a big surge on creativity on business sector, on public sector as well. On public sector, and the big question is, do we want a healthcare state where people are helped by the government, or we want a healthcare society where we create the platforms that allow people to create their own well-being? It's a big question, serious question. Uh, on private sector, I think is how can we unlock the energy of um, business how can we, you know, one of the big roles of government is to take away all the bottlenecks and red tape and allow business to, to, be, to, to grow as, as fast as possible. And the name of the game is openness. So here, for instance, how many people have iPhones or Android phones? Can I ask you? How many people here? iPhones or? Android phones, which is... Uh, smartphones powered by Android platform. So many people I can see, why is the iPhone so successful or the Android phone? It's because, and it's because of the device, yes, because it's beautiful, but it's because of App Store model, where people were able to create more than 300,000 applications on top of an infrastructure. So infrastructures create opportunities for innovation. That's why, for instance, the telecom sector is so important. But this model of openness allows many entrepreneurs from all over the world to sell in a global platform. So openness is very important. And openness also in terms of getting new, play, new players to, to the marketplace. That's why venture capital or business angels are so important. And that's why, for instance, we, as a company, Cisco, we acquire a company every seven weeks. We acquire a new company every seven weeks, all sizes. And uh, we actually, we use the crisis as an opportunity um, because uh, we didn't lay off. Uh, we have, we have uh, seven, uh, 67,000 people all over the world, although it's a very young company in European terms, 25 years old, but we didn't lay off. Only a couple of thousands, but that's pretty relevant in the overall sum of the number of people. We use a crisis to accelerate the pace of innovation at a time where our competitors were weaker. Right? So we emerged stronger from the crisis. So the second issue is collaboration. So nobody innovates on its own, neither the government nor any company, even the biggest company. So how can we create a more sense of collaboration? And that's why the fact that we are all connected creates unlimited opportunities. The second is global. Global relevance, but also global markets. The only way for a company or a country or a region or an economic or political bloc to be relevant is to succeed in the global marketplace. And that means create global products for the global market using global talents. And that means you can create successful meta-nationals in unpredictable places. I mean, you mentioned Airbus, very good example. I would mention Embraer as well. Embraer is a Brazilian company, it's the third largest uh, airline manufacturer in the world. Why are they successful? Because although they are based in Campinas, near Sao Paulo, they are a meta-national company. They were able to harness the capacity of a full range of suppliers from all over the world. They create a global product for the global market with global talent. The case of Nokia in the 80s as well. And the case of Skype, you know, in Estonia, nearby as well. Uh, so it's a big opportunity for any country. It's a huge opportunity for a very young entrepreneurial country 
even in, in with political stability like Poland. I think Poland can be a very, very good surprise. And it's already a very big, good surprise, I think, because when people were discussing a session, they thought that other countries would be you know, better off uh, in, in this new Europe. It turns out that uh, I think Poland is the big winner of, of this uh, accession process. Um, Europe is already also the biggest market in the world. You know, we, we cannot forget we are 500 million people, 27 member states, and everyone eager to be a member. But we are not taking advantage of this because the European market is still not very well integrated. So we are going to celebrate 20 years of internal market. Internal market should be back on the agenda. We should avoid fragmentation. We should encourage synchronization. That means, for instance, standards. Now, Europe leads the world on 3G technologies. Why? It was developed by you know, European universities, and it was a European standard. That be the Chinese, that be the Americans, etc. So standards are extremely important. So I believe in a model of innovation that is open, that is collaborative, and that is global. And I think a time of crisis is a time of unlimited opportunities. So it's a time where innovation is not an option. It's a must. It's really the big strategic decision. It's not a decision for the chief executive the chief information officer is not the decision for the Minister of Telecom of the Minister of Science. It's the strategic decision. It's a decision about where we want to be in the next 20 years. You mentioned Spain. Spain has 43% of youth unemployment. We face a risk of a lost generation in a great country like Spain. And I said, you know, research shows that the new jo the jobs I mean, the jobs we lost in the crisis will not come over, will not come back, right? We need to create new jobs. New jobs will be created mostly by new companies, regardless of the size. So we need to create the framework conditions that allows new companies, regardless of the size, ambitious companies, to emerge. This will be the companies that will create new products, will create new markets, and we'll create new jobs. And it's about demand as well. For instance, of course, demand, uh, when we speak about demand, uh, China, why Germany is uh, back on track to a certain extent, because China is buying again. Why health is going to be a big market? It's because we are aging, and also because of the nature of health. Uh, chronic disease now accounts for almost 80% of our health budgets. And chronic disease is not about people going to the doctor of the hospital and, and that's it. No, chronic disease is we need to take care of our own health. It's we not to take care of our well-being. It's about being connected, having other kinds of personalized care, etc. So demand always play a very important role. But we need to create the conditions for new news mark, these new markets to develop. We need to create conditions for the existing companies, regardless of the sectors, to become more com competitive. And, I, and the, the only way for this to happen is through innovation. Thank you very much.